I finally had the opportunity to sit down with Ed Delgado. He is the president and CEO of Equatoriana Airlines. We met yesterday at the airport and had a short chat. I know I've been talking about this for a long time, but it's finally here. Well, the interview was finally done. The airline's not here yet, but watch the interview and you'll see what's going on with that. I'll share the interview with you right after this. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Roger. Hello there. Okay, this has been a long time coming. We've been talking about doing this for probably six, seven, eight months or longer. You are Ed Delgado. You're the guy that I've been talking to everybody about. And what is it that you're going to do here in Monte? Hi, Don. Thanks for, thanks for the invite to this interview. Uh, well, I am the founder, CEO, and president of Equatoriana Airlines. And uh, we will soon be operating here in Monta out of this uh, newly reconstructed airport. And uh, hopefully we'll be uh, up in the air soon. Of course, when I first met you, it was uh, way, way back there when I did a video about Monta, and I got an email from this guy who thanked me for what I had said about Monta because it was kind of a rebuttal to another video that somebody else had done, and you thanked me for what I said about Monta, and you, at the end of it, you inter introduced yourself to me and that you were the president and CEO of this great airline that's going to start in June, July time frame. Now that was last year. You didn't quite, we didn't make that time frame. So what's, what has been the holdup? Because a lot of people are curious to know. <clears throat> Here's the holdup. Uh, the holdup was uh, the pandemic still affected us last year. 2022 was a tough year. Uh, we have everything ready to go. Our aircraft uh, that we've, uh, we have are ready to go in there in California. Uh, we had a, um, the holdup was the financial part of it, the investment part of it. Currently we have um, an investment bank in New York that we're working with and uh, that's moved along really well. So the funding is in place or it's about to come in and that will put us now in, in the operating mode uh, of the airline soon. So tell everybody where you're going to be flying to out of Monta. So out of Monta we have three destinations that we've already been authorized to fly to and it's going to be to Guayaquil to Cuenca and also to Quito. Okay. Those are the three main destinations that we're going to be flying initially. There's others in the pipeline that we're working on right now, uh, kind of doing our investigative you know, uh, work to see if the route is uh, feasible. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, other destinations that we're definitely looking. Now that the, the, aircraft, sorry, the airport is designated as international. Okay. Uh, I didn't notice, but did you mention the islands? The Galapagos Islands? The Galapagos Islands is one of the routes that we are analyzing right now. It was just recently authorized by both the, the Galapagos government and the, the government here locally in Manta. They, they finally authorized that the route can be open or ex, uh, explored by airlines. And that's something that we're going to look at. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> Something under 500 myself. words. Under 500 <laughs> words. Huh? Well, uh, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Uh, worked uh, worked for the uh, the airlines from a very young age. At the age of 20, I think it was 2021, 20, I started working for Delta Airlines at John Wayne Airport uh, through SkyWest Airlines uh, on the ground for ground operations. And then subsequent to that, I moved over to Continental Airlines and I was a flight attendant. I flew uh, for Continental Airlines for about 15 years. Uh, while at Continental, I, I occupied different positions uh, in, the, in the airline, in management. I was a supervisor, in-flight supervisor. I worked in corporate security. And I moved around quite a bit uh, while at Continental. Learned a lot. Uh, you got to remember when I started in 1991 at Continental, we were bankrupt. There was a bankrupt airline uh, operating, and you learned a lot when an airline's in bankrupt, bankruptcy. You, you learn quite a bit on how to get an operation out with uh, very little means. 
Uh, I'm a proud father of three boys. Uh, my oldest is 31. My youngest is uh, turn, about to turn 16. Uh, I'm not married. I'm, I'm divorced and uh, also living in Quito while we're getting the airline up and running. So I go, I commute back and forth between Los Angeles and Quito, Ecuador. Yeah, I think you told me you commute back what, once a month to here. It's got to uh, be getting tired. It's, it's, it's about every two to three weeks uh, I go back and forth uh, to between LA and Quito and I have to, you know, I have a, like I said, my, my 15 year old, soon to be 16 year old, still in high school. I still have to be there for him. Uh, my, uh, my mom lives with me uh, and uh, I have a business also in, in, in Orange County, California, in Anaheim, that I attend to, it's a transportation company. So I've always been in transportation, be it ground transportation or in, in aviation. Mm -hmm. What on earth gave you the idea of starting an airline in Ecuador? Uh, that's that's a, that's a good question, Don. Uh, when I was very young, I think I was uh, 10 or 12 years old, my dad, who worked for an airline, many of you might even still remember it, Western Airlines out of Los Angeles. And uh, Western at the time was contracted to uh, receive did ground handling for Equatoriana de Aviación back then. It was an airline from Ecuador, Equatoriana, that flew uh, the 707s, if you remember those. Yeah. The Boeing 707. And my dad took me to the airport one day and he goes, this is back when you know you could do this. He took me over, let's go, I want you to come to work with me. And I was with him the entire shift. And the very last flight that we were supposed to dispatch was the, an Equatoriana uh, flight uh, that took a delay. We didn't leave until, they didn't leave until 2.30 in the morning. But I just remember distinctly the, the, the sounds, the smells, the everything about that experience. I, 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 I've always, uh, I think that that's when that bug, that aviation bug was planted in me. Mm -hmm. you, you like that smell of jet fuel in the mornings? Uh, exactly. <laughs> that jet fuel, people think it's awful. I think it's the best smell around. <laughs> so what kind of airplanes are you going to fly? We're going to operate an aircraft. Uh, we vetted a lot of aircraft, uh, but it's the, for Ecuador, the only aircraft that makes sense is a, is a turboprop uh, aircraft and we chose the de Havilland Dash Q400. It's a modern aircraft. It's uh, built, built in Canada um, and it's 76 passengers, very fuel efficient and it's an aircraft that's built specifically for routes like in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Our longest route point to point if we were to fly it is 55 minutes. That's the longest route. Is that uh, down to Quito or Cuenca? We would say it's something like uh, Esmeraldas down to Guayaquil, okay. you know, from one end to yeah. another. But the majority of our routes are 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the, the whole you know, inside of Ecuador is, 35 minutes, with the exception of the Galapagos Islands, which is about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, but the aircraft is so versatile and so flexible that it's absolutely the best aircraft because we have high altitude airports, as you know, here in, in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Uh, La Tacunga is pretty high, uh, Tulcan is pretty high, Quito is a high airport, and then we have you know, low-lying airports in Guayaquil that are hot, you know, hot and humid. The aircraft performs incredibly well in all sorts of uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. Where are you getting your pilots from? We are hiring all local pilots. We have a pool of pilots that are ready to go here in Ecuador. Uh, they're anxious to start flying. Uh, we've actually trained the first four, uh, and then we were uh, we're going to be hiring additional uh, flight attendants, pilots, maintenance staff. Uh, so we're going to be hiring here soon, uh, probably in the next uh, 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. What about your flight crews? You like the flight attendants and ground personnel, and are they all going to be all local employees? Local employees. Uh, we we're going to be hiring. You know, from all. I mean. It, and I know that the majority of your viewership is expats. I mean, if they live here and they want to apply, come on down. Yeah. <laughs> what about international flights like Miami and Panama City? Is that in the pipeline somewhere? Or? The, 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 the business plan for Equatoriana was developed in five phases. It was actually done by a group out of uh, Santa Monica, California, experts in aviation, also in conjunction with a group out of uh, London, England. and. They developed this airline uh, in a five-phase plan. So North America flights uh, will start in our fourth phase, and we're talking probably within a five-year 
uh, from the initial start of operations. We have to be very careful uh, how we, we launch these international flights, although, although they are lucrative, you have to be very careful because the competition is pretty stiff. Mm -hmm. So yes, we will fly to Miami, um, we will operate to Orlando, but not to Orlando uh, MCO, the big airport. We're going to operate into a smaller airport there that's uh, more convenient. Like a regional. Regional, re regional but it's international. Yeah. Uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, Toronto, mm -hmm. those are all in the pipeline. Okay. As far as flights locally, like from Monta to Cuenca, do you know how many flights you're going to have per day, or has that been worked out yet? Mm -hmm. We will start off with probably three flights a week to Cuenca because it's a new route. Mm -hmm. So we have to mature the route. We have to de re you know, develop the route. Mm -hmm. You have to market it, you know, publicize it, and, and make sure that, that uh, our traveling public is, is uh, accustomed to it and that they can uh, rely on it. Mm -hmm. you know? So Guayaquil, Monta, uh, Monta to Guayaquil, Monta to Cuenca, Monta to Quito will be the three initial routes that we will okay. establish out of, uh, out of Monta. Yeah. Is it too early to talk about pricing? No. Uh, we are going to be, the, the, what makes this airline work is we're going to be a hybrid. And I want to be very clear about that. It's a hybrid. And I've lately, I, I've talked about this, and now I hear that word hybrid airline being tossed around in the aviation industry. We're a hybrid airline. We're not going to be low cost, and we're not going to be, um, we're not going to nickel and dime everybody. Here's the deal. We're going to control our costs internally by not overinflating ourselves with employees or, you know, things that we don't need. Control our costs internally and then offer full service externally. Meaning, you can get to the airport, we're not going to be, you know, looking at your carry-on or weighing your carry-on. We're going to allow you to bring your carry-on. And, and, you know, we're going to give service on board. At the very least, if I invite you to my house, I'm going to give you a cup of coffee, maybe a, a soda, or maybe something to eat. And that's, that's how we're going to treat our passengers, as though we're inviting them into our homes mm -hmm. and treat them like it used to be, like we used to be able to travel. And, and it used to be, uh, you used to look forward to jumping on an airplane and going to a destination because you, you were treated well on board. Mm -hmm. So when is the grand opening? Well, right now we are, the aircrafts are in, in California, they're in the desert in Victorville. Mm -hmm. We, uh, before I get to a launch date, we, we have some exciting news that we've actually have been working with Alaska Airlines. Alaska Airlines has been very, uh, has been great, has been awesome with us, and they've actually partnered with us with the acquisition of their, of their Q400s. Uh, Alaska recently retired their Q400s. Mm -hmm. They retired them, uh, it's not because they're old aircraft. The aircraft that we're, we're actually acquiring are only maybe nine to 10 years old, uh, which in the grand uh, you know, scheme of things, it's, it's not old at all. Uh, they switched to a different type of aircraft for their flights. So Alaska's been very, very, very helpful for us. And uh, those are the aircraft that we're gonna be picking up from the US. Uh, a launch date, I don't want to say because I've said it before and it's never materialized. In aviation, uh, unless, you know, unless you absolutely have that date in mind, it's better not to because then you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, fall, fall down and, and, and uh, not have uh, the answer that you, that you were looking for. Yeah, there's a lot of T's that have to be crossed and I's that have to be dotted in order to, I mean, because it is a safety thing too, you have to be... Absolutely, in ready to operate. Ready Aviation to operate. is one thing you don't want to rush. Right. Uh, absolutely, you do not want to rush, and you have to have redundancy in the things that you do just to make sure that the traveling public is always uh, is safe. It's it's paramount. That's that's number one thing in our in our uh, you know forefront is is safety. Mm -hmm. So in aviation, you have to uh, you don't want to rush things, and we don't want to rush things. We'll fly, and we right. will fly, and we'll and we'll be successful. Um, but let's do the th let's do things right. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be hauling freight as well? Do you know? Yes, you that's one freight. of our it's one of our uh, phases. We have phases for passenger, and then we have phases for cargo. Okay. Uh, initially, we'll we'll do small packages. We'll you know we're going to be moving small packages around Ecuador. Uh, we have some really unique, uh, kind of really cool uh, things that we're going to do with small packages that we're gonna maybe set up these you know, lockers like we see in the States. You see lockers at 
Costco or Home Depot or 7-Eleven, where you go up and you press, you know, enter a code and the door opens and your package is available. Yeah. Something similar to that is what we're going to do maybe at the airport and uh, rent out a space, put the locker there and, okay. and put that stuff. And then we'll, we'll go to bigger, bigger cargo uh, down the line. Yeah. I can't think of anything else right off hand to ask you. Is there anything that you'd like to add uh, for the viewers? Most of my audience are expats from the United States, North America that are coming here and we always talk about the the hassles with traveling between Monta and other cities. So I, I think you're going to help us solve that problem. You know? Well, I hope so, Don. I really do. Uh, listen, you know, one of the things that I've always said, and I think I've said it to you, is you, for the expats that currently live in Ecuador, be it here in Monta or in Cuenca or uh, in, in Quito, You've already chosen, you've already made the decision to have Ecuador as your new home, be it uh, forever home or temporary. Uh, get to know your home, get to go travel, travel and, and, and move around and, and see the other parts of this beautiful country. Ecuador is amazing, uh, Monta is amazing, but uh, uh, you know, get to, get to travel, travel. That's why you chose to come here to, you know, to, for something different, so get to know it. And one of the things that we're going to do with Equatoriana is, and I think I mentioned to you, Don, before, is that we're going to have a, a pass uh, um, where you can buy a pass and you can travel unlimited uh, in Ecuador to all of our flights for one fixed price. So you pay, let's give you an example, $500, and you can travel for 60 days or 75 days. We haven't really set down and mm -hmm. put that. But that's more for the expats that go, you know what, I want to, tomorrow I want to go to Quito. Tomorrow I want to go to Cuenca or, you know, I want to go to Guayaquil for the day, what have you. But you can move around and really get to know Ecuador. Um, we're doing something good and we, it, we, it's not only for the Ecuadorians, it's, it's for everybody that lives in Ecuador mm -hmm. or is thinking of coming to Ecuador. This is your airline. This is what uh, we're establishing for you. And, and not to mention coming to Monta. Uh, there's a huge future for Monta here. Bringing this airline in here is definitely a, a major contribution to its growth. We all know that, and we certainly thank you for, uh, for bringing it on board. Yeah, Monta, definitely uh, come to Monta. This is beautiful. It's a beautiful city. There's the, uh, listen, besides the beaches and the climate here and everything else that the, the city has to offer, the, the food is just out of this world. Right. I mean, it's fantastic. The food is just great. Uh, and the seafood and all sorts of stuff. It's just, you can eat well here. Yeah. Okay, so I've been telling everybody all this time that the name of the airline is Equatoriana. Yeah. But that's not what you're calling it. So give us the correct pronunciation for well, it, Well, you know, you kind of said it pro pro you know, properly. Mm -hmm. It's Equatoriana. 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 Equatoriana Airlines. Uh, like I said, the, the, the one that existed here in the country before was Equatoriana de Aviación. Uh, that went away about 20 plus years ago. Uh, this new one is Equatoriana Airlines, and we, we, we designated airlines because the future of the airline, the future of Equatoriana is international. Yeah. So you want to sit at the table with the rest of the airlines, you got to make sure that you, you sure. mirror them in somehow. Okay. All right. So I'm going to uh, be in touch with you constantly, and when, as you get updated information about you know, a, a, a grand opening date and so forth. I can do little shorts about it, you know, yeah. on the channel. We want to keep everybody informed about the progress of this airline because we, we want to stand behind you as much as we can as well. So I thank you for the time you're spending with me. Thank God you finally got some free time where you could spend some time with me <laughs> and we can get this done. So well, thank, thank you so much. Thank you for your time and, and thank you for bringing this airline to Monta. Thank you, Don. I really appreciate your time, and we look forward to bringing something really cool uh, to Manta uh, for everybody. Um, thank you. So that's it. Let's keep our fingers crossed. It's going to be nice to have an airline here, a local airline, a regional airline here in Manta. The airport's like 10 minutes away from Sea Lago, 15 minutes away from Barbasquil, if you rush it. <laughs> Um, it's going to be nice to be able to just drive such a short distance, hop on an airplane, a regional carrier, and an hour later be in somewhere like Cuenca. Hour and a half be on the Galapagos Islands. So let's keep our fingers crossed and, and stand behind Ed and when he 
when he gets this airline opened up, let's support him, okay? We need him. He needs us. I think it's a win-win situation for everybody. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that like button. If you didn't like the video, bite me. And I say that with peace and love, okay? I'll see you folks on the next one. Ciao, ciao.